Hi everyone. Uh, I am uh, very very happy uh, today uh, because you know this year launched the NEET SS program for various branches and we also launched it for Obzin Gaini Super Speciality Courses and uh, I'm very proud to have with me one of the toppers today, Dr. Anagha Menon. So let's welcome her. Heartiest congratulations. She secured an awesome three and six marks uh, in the NEET held in January. Naga, and that's awesome. And I think that's going to be somewhere around rank three. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, how do you? Awesome. It is a very number of seats is very less. And, uh, you know, you have to do your duties, you have to prepare. So there's a lot into it. So how do you feel uh, right now? Um, I'm, I'm happy, excited, at the same time, thankful. Uh, yes, definitely. You, you deserve to be happy. And um, uh, let, let's let's start a little about how you decided uh, that you want to prepare for NEAT SS. What was your dream uh, in your mind? How did you start your preparation, Anaga? Ma'am, uh, I've done my MD from Ames Delhi and I joined a ship there at Ames Delhi itself. So I was Great. working in a gynae onco unit. So that is when I decided okay. to pursue gynae oncology. So uh, then I joined DAMS in to, uh, towards the end of September and October. So the right. main strategy that I thought was I should focus on topics which I'm relatively weak. So okay. I thought I'll prepare reproductive medicine initially as well as gynae onco. And right at the same time so that is when okay. the initial few classes of dams were both the super speciality so that helped me out a lot the first three classes i suppose were both covering gynecology and infertility so yes. that was a big benefit too for me okay. and the way the I classes think, are structured yeah uh, with i think it's very classes. important because a major chunk of the paper is uh, gynecology infertility, reproductive uh, endocrinology. So this constitutes a major chunk in the paper. So that is how we decided that we will give you the more high yielding things first and then cover the general aspect as well. Yes, ma'am, that really helped me out because the initial, when you cover the main chunk initially, that that relieves some sort of pressure and makes you feel confident to co go through the rest of the things. That's right. And Anaga, since uh, the NEAT SS was, you know, uh, there were live classes that we did and, uh, you know, we did it in an MCQ format. So there were 50 MCQs and we took about three to four hours to discuss those. So, uh, you know, since we provided the schedule for you, how did you prepare uh, before the class? Ma'am, initially I was focusing on any SS actually. So I'd uh, done okay. a lot of gynae conco. Uh, okay. I got all India rank three, but there were only two seats, ma'am. So I was yeah, waiting. I know. So that's that's awesome again. Heartiest congratulations. So that's a that's a double double uh, treat for us. Yes. So, ma'am, but then afterwards, when I narrowly missed out, I shifted the focus towards NEAT, and that is when I started going back to the classes on reproductive medicine, reproductive endocrinology, okay. and infertility, and then I focused on that more. So because the classes were already recorded, so it became easy for me to review them. And right. the way it was organized in the form of MCQs, like the high yield topics were covered. And then from that, the connected important topics were also covered in the same sitting. So within a span of three hours, and if you watch the recorded video, even in a lesser amount of time, you could actually cover a lot of important topics. Great. So Anagha, Bache, you have done exceedingly well in both the exams, INISS as well as NEET SS. I think you are the best person to guide the future aspirants as well, Anaga. So maybe, you know, some insight, because initially you remember there was a, there was a, a, a circular saying that they're going to change the pattern just a few months before the exam, but then the pattern was reverted back to original. But we kept the preparation on the new pattern only, where we were focusing uh, in within the entire course syllabus, you know. So can you highlight something about the pattern of the exam? What is included? What is of more weightage? And, um, you know, some input on how to prepare uh, or start thinking to prepare when you want to prepare because uh, it is a vast course, right? And uh, I think medical science is something that there is no end to it. You can just go on and keep improving yourself on it. So your uh, inputs would be very valuable. Ma'am, for NESS, the focus lies in the super speciality 
uh, subject that you choose because even though yeah. they have not given a formal distribution a major chunk of the questions do actually come from super specialty subject with yeah. a very little uh, contribution of general gynec but when right. it comes to neat you have to be thorough with your basics uh, the things that we might ignore during our pg actually so that has to be done and then uh, both reproductive medicine and gynec oncology because they contribute 60% of the mark and yeah. there is no clear cut distribution as to the question number so you have to be strong in both and it's not really necessary to go into the depths of everything you have to know the correct amount like the ad, uh, guidelines new guidelines yeah. the way uh, the treatments that are advised uh so yeah ma'am it becomes important to have a working knowledge of both subjects actually that's that i think she is pointed out very very important points that for ini ss it is more selective so whatever ss you have applied for the major chunk is going to be from that particular part but when it comes to neat ss they are asking uh, a quite lot of general uh, obs and general gynecology as well and uh, therefore a depth of knowledge but yet selective i think this is the key thing that she has highlighted there has to be a balance between what you are going to study and that is how i think a little input uh, you know helps that okay you should do this more and this is what is asked and it helps you to narrow down your zone where you can put in your energy and aga can you also bachi help us to uh, uh, tell us something about the distribution between obstetrics and gynecology beta uh ma'am this in this year ma'am um, it was more of gyne compared to obs ma'am the obs questions yeah. that came were relatively uh, simpler or quite non specific but the gyne yeah. questions were kind of specific and to the point and you have to know the uh, either the ultrasound images the hysteroscopic images or the recent guidelines for treatment so they were quite specific right absolutely right and Uh, when i analyzed the paper and aga i realized that it was a good mix there were some very basic questions also and there were high level questions as well where you needed to know the newest thing the newest modality or the details even in the form of percentages for that matter so what would you want to say on that ma'am i think like like you said ma'am you have to have find a balance between how like uh, the recent advances versus the basic knowledge so uh, like there are certain topics like endometriosis and infertility where they are asking relatively recent guidelines even for oncology yeah. pre malignant lesions they are asking recent guidelines so yes. that is yeah. those are topics which we need to really study in depth that's right and and you know there were pretty clinical questions as well i have seen that uh, they have asked clinical questions in obstetrics also whether it is from rh negative or uh, you know uh, any basic topic and they have asked clinical questions in uh, gyne also and other than that there were core theoretical questions as well so uh, what would you want to say on that anaga ma'am it, it really becomes important to have a thorough fundamental ma'am because uh, yeah. when they ask clinical questions it might not be something that we would have had time to revise so if you know your basics and you've read well so that becomes relatively easier then so we we should be doing both the th- theories part as well as mcqs really that is what yes, i, I was going to ask you that that uh, what is a good combination of theory and mcq did you go retrograde so did you start from mcqs and then selectively went on to the theory of those topics or how was your strategy ma'am i used to attend the classes and i used to listen to the topics that were covered so when since it is in an mcq format and then uh, both you and sir you cover the related topic associated with the mcq so i used to go retrograde because with the limited amount of time that we have for preparation you cannot go uh, you cannot read the textbooks and then go and do mcqs so it's always i feel better to do the mcqs find out what is important and go back and read that theory i think that's again a very very important point that she's highlighted especially when you're close to the exam when a month or two is there then it is always better to try and go retrograde and also anaga since um, you just finished your post grad and you started your res- uh, sr ship i would want to ask you that if if people really want to ask you what is a good time to appear for the neat ss exams you know they want to know should we do a year of sr ship and then give it or should we give it immediately after post grad i know these are very personal things but still what is your input because see you have to take care of a lot of other aspects for example how good are you with your operative skills if you feel under confident it's a better idea to 
you know get hands on experience with your sr ship and then sort of but if you are very very focused that no i want to super specialize only and do only one particular niche area you know then then you can straight away go ahead so what is your idea on what is a good time to appear for these exams ma'am i had already completed around 4 5 months of sr ship when the notification okay. for uh, the entrance came so i thought i'll give it this time around See, prepare also but at the same time see how the pattern is this is the first time that i was actually appearing so i wanted okay. to know how the pattern is how the questions are where to read from so that is right. why i gave it this time around but like you said ma'am it's a personal choice as to when to appear right and uh, uh, also can you uh, can you tell us about uh, the distribution in the paper i mean something about what was the total number of questions what was general and what was selective and maybe if i ask you what do you think are five or six key topics that somebody who wa- wants to prepare for the ss exams should focus on ma'am in neat there are 100 questions 40 are from uh, general obs and gynae 60 right. uh, as a combination of both reproductive medicine and uh, gynec oncology Uh, ma'am, reproductive medicine. Uh, the key topics are infertility, endometriosis. They do ask a lot of questions. Uh, image-based, guidelines-based, treatment-based. Then PCOS, adenomyosis, fibroid. Then okay. in gynec oncology, uh, CA cervix, uh, pre-malignant lesions. Yes. This time around, CA vulva came quite a lot. Uh, there were actually maybe one, two, three questions on CA vulva itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ma'am. so that's that's great so that is a good a good input into if you want to prepare what should you start focusing on because as she said if you uh, f- start focusing more important topics they give you confidence that you you can do it right and uh, nagha how many questions uh, did you attempt out of 100 and uh, how many correct do you think you approximately have any idea Uh, ma'am, because the negative marking is uh, favorable and it is a quite a lot high scoring exam, so I thought I'll attempt more. So I've left only yes. maybe two, two, three questions, ma'am. I think that is a very wise thing to do. You should go aggressive when the negative marking is a little, is not very tough on you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So maybe I've left two, two, three questions, ma'am. Okay, that's that's wonderful, and I'm sure you've had a good number of correct questions because your score is pretty high and. and that's why the top in the top 3 is absolutely amazing and i presume you know your juniors want to approach you and want to ask you about how to do as well as good as you have done so what would be uh, let's say the three key things that you would want to tell them they should do in order to do well or secure good marks and rank since the number of seats are very less and it's very selective so what would your advice be to be consistent to know the basics and still do mcqs and to never lose lose hope that's that's absolutely wonderful yes so you can never shy off from your basics keep your hopes high and you know be consistent i think those are essentially the three very important ingredients uh, uh thank you anaga i think this has been a very very enlightening interview and i'm sure a lot of students who listen to you uh, would get a good input on what they should do and how they should start and at the same time if they feel they can uh, join the neat ss course for obs and gynae as well uh, i mean we will uh, uh, you know discuss the current year papers as well and try and make it even more productive for the upcoming exams because uh, the exams are held twice in a year and i think the next session is likely to be in june am i right naga yes ma'am yes ma'am june right so great and uh, just to tell all the students uh, that we also have uh, you know pg teaching programs resident programs for obs and gynae uh, which have both theory and practical so in case you know because i do believe after going through the paper that you have to have a very sound knowledge of theory as well so yes your clinical work your experience everything counts your patient management counts but you need to have a good thorough theoretical base for these exams anaga do you agree on that yes ma'am definitely so uh right so if you want to start beforehand for your uh, you know preparation then we do have the uh, theory and the practical courses for residents as well so thank you anaga for having uh, faith in us and um, thank you for making us a part of your journey it was an absolute pleasure uh, we wish you a very very bright future ahead and i am seeing a gynae onco onco surgeon now ahead 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks to you, ma'am, and sir also, Anil sir also. Thank you so much for everything. Ma thank you. Thank you so much, Anaga. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'm sure she is going to shine and she's going to do great for herself and for her patients. We wish you loads of good luck, bache, and a very bright future ahead. Thank you, Anaga. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye now.